Hello everybody, um, we are back with another part of the Cat Lady, finally. Um, my school is over for this semester, so hopefully I will have a chance to record a whole bunch of stuff before I start classes um, in two weeks. Um, but in the meantime, it is Game City. Um, I, I'm hoping to record all of the Cat Lady, um, maybe not today, but uh, um, in the next, in the, in the break. So hopefully I'll have some updates quickly, not that I haven't said that before, but... <coughs> Go ahead and get into the game here. I don't remember what we were doing. Okay. Um, I believe we had check map. Okay. Um, we need to check out the noise. Um, considering Brian has run, I think it's Brian. It's Brian, right? Um, considering the nice guy on flat seven has run out, we can go and check his flat, I believe. Um, and then we have the cat ghost thing to do. So, let's go check out. Maybe Brian's the jerk, I can't remember. Open. Door's locked. No kidding. Mitzi. Pick lock. Let's find a lock first. Yeah. There's a lock right here. Yes, thank you, Mitzi. Now that he's gone, we can get inside. My audience. Yes, wow. let's do that. I'll close my eyes and you pick that lock, Mitzi. Okay. But no peeking. I'd never. You've really hurt my feelings now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now close them. There. Job done. Jesus. Are these... Relax, Mrs. A. They're just Halloween masks. Oh, good. That's good. Because I swear, if I see another bloody head... It's not too much to ask for. Halloween masks. Um, take clown's mask. I hate clowns so much, I'd rather not touch this mask at all. Take devil's mask. I'd rather... <laughs> I get terribly sweaty wearing it. There's such a thing as too much rubber. Take hockey mask. I don't remember what we're supposed to do with this. Plants. Examine. None of these look illegal. I guess he just likes plants. I can't talk today. And my cat's driving me nuts. Speaker. Examine. Speaker is massive, and it's connected to Jesse's computer. Whenever he plays some music, the walls must be shaking. Okay, this is Jesse. Brian is the jerk. Did it say that on my map? Uh, Jesse's PC. Examine. It's Jesse's PC. Is that the infamous source of noise? Switch on. That won't work. Seems so. Let's cut the power off. Use. It won't work. There's no power. Yeah, I wonder who did that. Socket. Examine. Jesse's PC is plugged in here. If only we had access to a working electrical outlet. Okay. I remember we need to use this with the window. This puzzle took me forever because I knew what I was supposed to do, but for some reason I couldn't I couldn't get it to work. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. I think I was trying to do it from the bottom floor. So, who's got windows over this side of the building? Well, Joe Davis lives right below. But I'm not going there again. I want to make that clear. I guess we could also check one flat below Joe's. I just hope the cable's long enough. Let's find out, shall we? Yeah, nobody wants to go to Joe's flat. Alright, we're just gonna wander off. Open. Cable, plug in. Why didn't Mitzi stay upstairs and be useful? Mm -hmm. 
I don't have much good commentary for this part because I only sort of remember what's going on. Right. I should be able to use that computer now. Could you give me five minutes, Mrs. A? Sure. Why not? I'll keep an eye on the door. You do that, Susan. It's not him either. God damn it! Press any button to close. So, do we want to start taking bets on who it is? Spoiler alert, it's not Brian. That would be too easy. Speaking of which, what am I doing? Okay, ground floor. Let's go see if we can remember what to do about the cat ghost. Scissors on the dress. <coughs> we need to make some adjustments. Now, this is a dress worthy of the cat widow. <laughs> Why don't you admit it was too small for you? Ha ha, bloody ha. Why don't you just shut up? Whoever wore this dress probably hadn't eaten in years. You'd struggle to get a skeleton into it. Yeah, what's your name from Downfall? Now I feel like a jerk, I don't remember her name. Um, Agnes, maybe? Let's see if this works. Use. You easily press it open with the screwdriver. Done, I can pick up the tin now. Take. This is it. We've got all we need. Great! Are you going to tell me about the Cat Widow now? Yes. It's story time, Mitzi. The legend says there was once a bad man who hated cats. He hated his neighbors too, and his job. And when it rained, He'd curse and smash things. He hated his bald head and his weak, ugly body. He probably hated himself the most, although he would never admit it. I think I see where this is going. One day, out of pure hatred for the whole world and everything that lives, he captured a family of cats and drowned them all in the river. That day, the sun turned black and all the birds went silent as the six kittens struggled for life. But trapped in a strong canvas bag, they never had a chance. They all died that day, all but one. The mother cat, in a desperate fight to set herself free, by pure luck clawed her way out of the bag and swam to the shore. She lost everything that day her beautiful children, and her proud husband. Her heart crashed into pieces as she watched their limp dead bodies stolen by the current. Running after them, she followed them for days, for as long as she could. Then, eventually, she lost sight of them. She stayed on the bank of the river for a while. The world stopped turning for her, her eyes empty and blind. And then, one day, she slowly slid down the bank and into the cold, dark water. She gave in to it. She let the river take her away too, cover her mouth, her ears, her eyes. But as the water filled her lungs, and she started slipping into darkness, there was another strange feeling that burst in her mind like a ball of flames. Anger. Rage, even. Her last craving, before she drowned, was for revenge. For blood. 
and so she returned, reborn and changed, a cat widow, veiled in black, mistress of the cats. Her body of a young woman, but her eyes of a cat, and her face, white, rotten, face of a corpse, those who saw it rarely lived to tell the tale. She would get her revenge on all cat killers and cat torturers, but there was someone she had to see first, someone special, someone she really hated the most. As the evening came, it was strangely quiet in the man's flat. As he lived alone, he usually liked to fill the silence with the sound of radio or TV shows. But that night, he switched them all off, feeling anxious and tired after work. He tried to sleep, but couldn't. And for once, there wasn't anyone there he could blame for it. As he stared through the window, he kept thinking about how much he hated that view. He liked it once, a long time ago, when his wife was still there and they were happy together. Suddenly, he heard knocking on the door. Some part of him was glad, because that meant he could take it out on whoever decided to bother him. nobody there. He almost felt disappointed, but before he turned to walk away, he suddenly noticed something down the hall. On a nearby wall there was a giant shadow of a cat. He noticed a shadow of a cloaked figure standing ahead. The dead body of a disemboweled cat hung on the radiator. <clears throat> on a nearby wall there was a giant shadow of a cat. He stopped again. He couldn't believe his eyes. Someone wrote cat killer on his door. There was a cat's skull stuck on the seat of his bike. Someone wrote asshole on his door. That would have been appropriate. Someone wrote cat killer on his door. He had a passion for trains. Although he hated being a train driver, he had always enjoyed watching them move. But now, his train model was moving all on its own. He was absolutely certain he'd left it switched off. And yet, there it was, running at crazy speed, remote control missing. Something was seriously wrong, and that something had entered his home now, too. He hoped he was just imagining things, tired as he was. But there was another surprise waiting for him in his bedroom. A giant blood-soaked zombie cat sat on his bed. Cat Widow is here was written all over the wall. <coughs> cat Widow is here was written all over the wall. As in a dream, he went to the kitchen to get a drink. Getting really scared now, he decided to call the police. <coughs> Getting really scared now, he decided to call the police. His phone was of no use. The SIM card had been removed, and that wasn't even the worst part. There was a photo of a black cat set as screensaver. He remembered this cat. He'd watched that strange pest control man put it in a cage and into his van. He'd looked at it through the window for a while, then pulled the curtains and went to bed. 
as in a dream, he went to the kitchen to get a drink. There was no water. He knew there were valves in the basement that turned it off, but no one's been down there for years. He felt sick. None of this made any sense. And yet, deep down, he knew what he did to the cats was wrong. There was a part of him that almost wanted to be punished. The part he tried so hard to hide. He thought he'd heard something in the corridor. Was there someone there with him? His head was spinning. He felt ambushed, trapped like an animal. He had to get out of there. He stopped, paralyzed. He'd heard something right in front of him. A whisper, more like a her. She was there in the dark corner of his living room, waiting. Black veil covering that pale, dead face. And yet, he could almost feel Cat Widow's eyes piercing through him. Cat Widow aimed a shotgun at his chest and fired. She came closer like a ghost and swiftly removed the veil. She came closer like a ghost and swiftly removed the veil. She came back for him, to take him to the river, to make him pay for what he'd done. As he looked into her eyes, he could feel the world spinning around him, his knees go weak, his pants suddenly wet around his crotch. As much as he hated life, he didn't want to die either. Inside, he was just a big, stinking coward. And then... He fainted. Ha ha ha! Did you see his face? I knew he'd fall for this. Yeah, we scared the living shit out of him. Now that's teamwork. Are you sure he won't know it was you, though? Oh, he probably will. Once he's had time to think about what happened. But he's too proud to ever admit he's been beaten by a woman. I know him just about enough to know that. Let's hope so. I don't want you to get in trouble because of me. No. That was something I had to do for myself. And I feel much better for it. The only problem now is that we still haven't found Eye of Adam. Because it definitely isn't Brian. I've searched through his laptop and all I found was a load of porn. Let's cross him off the list. Well, that means we've checked everyone. We've hit a brick wall. Perhaps I was wrong. Maybe he doesn't live here at all. I think we need to sleep on it. And we might get some more ideas in the morning. Shall we head back home? Yeah, I do feel tired. You're right, we need some sleep. Really wish there was an elevator in this building. What's that? A note? What does it say, Mrs. A? You will not believe it. Meet me at midnight, both of you. I will wait. Flat five. Door will be open. Do not fear. Eye of Adam. Flat five? That's the old guy. It can't be. It can't be him. I guess we'll find out. At midnight. We've got a few hours until then. Let's get some coffee.
think this is the downfall thing. It's just you and me, my love. No one will find us here. Stop worrying, Ivy. It will be all right. I will always love you. You know that. I'm gonna make you all better. Chapter 7 Don't Feed the Troll Alright, well this looks like a good place to end this part. Um, I believe there will only be maybe two more parts remaining, um, if I remember correctly how long the rest of the game goes. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and record uh, hopefully both parts, and maybe all parts. Um, so I'm going to end that here, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!